Hi, Abby Kelly Foster friends. It's Mrs. Wiggins here. And today I'm going to read you the book, Anansi and the Talking Melon. Now, a lot of my friends at Abby Kelly know who Anansi is because you have family and friends and relatives that live in um, Ghana, where the story comes from. Um, here's the Ghana was in Africa, and Ghana was right around here. Um, and this is the this is the continent of Africa in a artist rendition um, that I got when I went to Tanzania. But that's where it comes from, these stories. And these stories are long, almost like fairy tales. They're folk tales that have um, the main um, character is Anansi. He's a trickster. He's known for playing tricks on everybody. And that's what this book is about. He's going to play some tricks on his friends. Now, I apologize. This is a paperback edition, so it's a little bit flimsy and um, not great for reading um, on camera, but we'll try it today and see. Um, so, and it's retold by Eric A. Kimmel, because of course he, this is a story that was passed down, so he's telling his own version of it, Eric Kimmel, and it's illustrated by Janet Stevens. And this looks like a big basketball, but that's the melon, like a cantaloupe or something you might have, but it's a big melon. And there's Anansi on the front cover. Um, so, and these are some of the characters I want to show you first. So there's um, Elephant, he's the, one of the main characters, and then there's Hippo, big Hippo, and poor ugly Warthog. He's not too pretty, and um, he's a little bit too big. So you'll see. So you kind of need to understand that to understand the story. It's a little bit tricky. So let's start uh, reading Anansi and the Talking Melon. And by the way, this is one of my favorite books. I think it's hilarious. I hope that you find it funny, too. And there's the melon on the title page. The publisher is Holiday House. Publishers, again, are the companies that turn someone's story um, into a real book that we get to read. Now, if you have this book at home, it'd be great if you want to read aloud, I mean, read along with the story. Um, but, of course, you don't have to. But you can just listen. So there's a Nancy up in this tree. Um, and there's the pat garden patch um, that elephant, it's his garden, and there's all the melons. So here we go. You ready? One fine morning, Anansi the spider sat high up in a thorn tree, looking down into Elephant's garden. Elephant was hoeing his melon patch. The ripe melons seemed to call out to Anansi, Look how juicy and sweet we are. Come eat us. Anansi loved to eat melons, but he was much too lazy to grow them himself. So he sat up in the thorn tree, watching and waiting, while the sun rose high in the sky and the day grew warm. By the time noon came, it was too hot to work. Elephant put down his hoe and went inside his house to take a nap. Here was the moment Anansi had been waiting for. He broke off a thorn and dropped down into the melon patch. He used the thorn to bore a hole in the biggest, ripest melon. I think he's hungry. He made a hole in the melon so he can get down in there. Anansi squeezed inside and started eating. He ate and ate until he was as round as a berry. I'm full, Anansi said at last. Elephant will be coming back soon. It's time to go. But when he tried to squeeze through the hole, Anansi had a surprise. He didn't fit. The hole was big enough for a thin spider, but much too small for a fat one. I'm stuck, Anansi cried. I can't get out. I will have to wait until I am thin again. Nancy sat down on a pile of melon seeds and waited to get thin. Time passed slowly. I'm bored, Anansi said. I wish I had something to do. Hmm. I think, I hope he doesn't get into mischief. He loves to play tricks and he's got lots of time to think. Just then, he heard Elephant returning to the garden. 
Anansi had an idea. When Elephant gets closer, I will say something. Elephant will think the melon is talking. What fun! Elephant walked over to the melon patch. Look at this fine melon. How big and ripe it is, he said, picking it up. That's the answer. It's the one with the hole. Uh-oh. Ouch! cried Anansi. Elephant jumped. Uh, uh, who said that? I did. The melon, Anansi said. I didn't know melons could talk, said Elephant. Of course we do. We talk all the time. The trouble is, you never listen. I can't believe my ears, Elephant exclaimed. A talking melon? Who could believe it? I must show this to the king. The elephant ran down the road, carrying the melon with Anansi inside. Along the way, he ran into Hippo. Where are you going with that melon? Hippo asked. I'm taking it to the king, Elephant told him. What for? The king has hundreds of melons. He doesn't have one like this, Elephant said. This is a talking melon. Hippo didn't believe Elephant. A talking melon? What an idea. That's as ridiculous as... A skinny hippo, the melon said. Hippo got so angry, his face turned red. Who said that? Did you say that, Elephant? It wasn't me. It was the melon, Elephant said. I told you it talks. Do you believe me now? I do, Hippo exclaimed. I, I, I want to go with you. I want to hear what the king says when you show him this talking melon. Come along then, said Elephant. So Elephant and Hippo went down the road together, carrying the melon. By and by, they ran into Warthog. Where are you taking that melon? Warthog asked them. We're taking it to the king, Elephant and Hippo told him. What for? The king has hundreds of melons, Warthog said. He doesn't have one like this, Hippo replied. This melon talks. I heard it. <laughs> Warthog started to laugh. <laughs> A talking melon? Pfft, why, that's as ridiculous as... A handsome warthog, said the melon. Warthog got so angry, he shook all over. Who said that? Did you say that, elephant? Did you say that, hippo? Of course not, Hippo and Elephant told him. The melon talks. Do you believe us now? I do, cried Warthog. Let me go with you. I want to see what the king says, does, when you show him this talking melon. So Warthog, Elephant, and Hippo went down the road together, carrying the melon. Along the way, they met Ostrich, Rhino, and Turtle. They didn't believe the melon could talk either until they heard it for themselves. Then they wanted to come along, too. All going down to see the king. Oh, this is the king. He's a chimpanzee, but he's got a crown on his head, so you know he's the king. The animals came before the king. Elephant bowed low as he placed the melon at the king's feet. The king looked down. Why did you bring me a melon? He asked Elephant. I have hundreds of melons growing in my garden. You don't have one like this, Elephant said. This melon talks. Talking 
melon? I don't believe it. Say something, melon. The king prodded the melon with his foot. The melon said nothing. Melon, the king said in a slightly louder voice, there's, there's no reason to be shy. Say whatever you like. I only want to hear you talk. The melon still said nothing. The king grew impatient. Melon, if you can talk, I want you to say something. I command you to speak. The melon did not make a sound. The king gave up. Oh, this is a stupid melon, he said. Just then, the melon spoke. Stupid, am I? Why do you say that? I'm not the one who talks to melons. The animals had never seen the king so angry. How dare this melon insult me, he shouted. The king picked up the melon and hurled it as far as he could. The melon bounced and rolled all the way to Elephant's house. Comp! It smacked into the thorn tree and burst into pieces. Anansi picked himself up from among the bits of melon rind. All the excitement had made him thin. And now that he was thin again, he was hungry. Anansi climbed the banana tree. He settled himself in the middle of a big bunch of bananas and started eating. Elephant returned. He went straight to the melon patch. You melons got me in trouble with the king, Elephant said. From now on, you can talk all you like. I'm not going to listen to a word you say. Good for you, elephant, Anansi called from the bananas. We bananas would have warned, should have warned you. Talking melons are nothing but trouble. <laughs> so you see he's, he's gone to the bananas now, and now he's going to, if he goes inside the banana, he'll be a talking banana and fool some more animals, maybe. He think he, I think he liked that trick that he pulled on them. Um, and so Anansi and the talking melon. Again, um, Anansi loves to play tricks, and he definitely played a trick in this book that I think is very, very funny, and I hope you liked it. And I hope that you keep reading, read every day, don't forget, and be kind. Be kind to your family and your friends that you're with, okay? And I hope you have a great um, day. Bye.